The Museo Archeologico in Naples, Italy is one of many museums around the world that have Egyptian collections. But this collection contains many fascinating pieces, from an ink pot shaped as a baboon, a mummified crocodile, and a mummified woman dating back from the reign of Pharaoh Susanus. the Silver Pharaoh. But apart from pharaohs and gods, I've come here today to investigate an ordinary married couple's life, their death, and to bring them back to life. and his wife, Tanet. They lived around 3,250 years ago, and the Sanesut worked for none other than Ramses II. The Sanesut was actually the chief captain of Ramses II's ships. Ramses II lived around the mid part of Egypt's history. In fact, Cleopatra was much closer to us and lived at 30 BC, 3,200 years before Egypt was unified by King Nama. That's around 5,000 years ago. In the middle part of this time frame comes the famous Tutankhamun. Less than 20 years after Tut came Ramses the Great. Ramses is Egypt's longest reigning king and lived around 96 years. He was a prolific builder and warrior, constructing many of the monuments that we see today, including the biggest expansion of Karnak and Luxor Temple. To the south, he built Abu Simbel, where he documented his triumph in the Battle of Kadesh. He had over 100 children and many wives, yet his principal wife was Queen Nefertari. Boats played a very important role, not only in everyday life, but also in religious beliefs. Ramses had a large fleet of ships to travel all along the Nile, for either religious ceremonies or to travel in military campaigns. Ships were also used to transport stone to build monuments. Since Pasanesut lived near the end of Ramses's life and was afforded a tomb, he was no doubt the captain that directly transported the king, maybe even on his final journey. Here in Napoli, they actually have four fragments that belonged to Pasana's suit. Here we have a stela, two stela in fact, and two tomb wall fragments. Here we see Pasana's suit and his wife, Tanetmet, receiving offerings here from their children. And Pasana's suit here, unfortunately he's damaged, giving offerings to Ra. As we move on, the, I love this scene. Here we have Hassan's suit, here with his wife, receiving offerings from his son, and here we actually have the, the couple receiving offerings from the tree goddess. Usually she's seen as Sycamore, but here she is Hathor. And the barber receiving the water that Hathor is pouring from the trees. As we move on, we have up here a beautiful piece of Pasaya's suit with his little beard and he is giving offerings to the god of the dead who is in fact Osiris and his sister Isis with Anubis at the top. Here is a beautiful scene again of Pasaya's suit and his children and his youngest child which is probably his grandchild and they are receiving offerings of incense for their soul for eternity. The village, Deir al Medina, housed the families of the men that built the royal tombs for almost 400 years. They were so skilled that they were even able to have their own tombs dug into the hills that surrounded the secret village.
However, since his tomb was found in the late 1700s and items being added to the Borgia collection, not much archaeological evidence is available on its exact location. Most nobles were afforded a tomb in the hills behind the Colossi of Memnon, yet experts believe that his tomb is in Saqqara. Behind me is one of the hidden gems in this museum. It is one of the most beautiful pieces that I've ever seen. Not for its dazzling color or for it being clad in gold, but for what it represents. Never before have I seen such a beautiful piece from a tomb. It is Pisane Sut and his wife Tanetmet standing here at the edge of a hill where their tomb would be. They are standing here before an offering table with bread and fruits and their bar bird, which is the spirit that is taking flight, which shows their spirit leaving the tomb and entering heaven. And here is Tanetmet and Pisane Sut holding sails, catching the wind from the north. As we know, he was the captain for Ramsay's ship. So this is quite a beautiful scene, showing him holding a sail from that ship. But when we investigate this closer, this was actually once fully colored. And today, using our photographic skills, we can actually enhance these colors and bring this piece back to life. Over 3,000 years can cause the paint to chip off from humidity and natural causes. The ancient Egyptians used a mixture of organic pigments, water and egg white to make paint. The most common colors were red and yellow, as they could be extracted from the rocks around them. White from limestone and black from coal were also used. The most expensive colors were greens and blues, as they were made from ground precious stones such as lapis and turquoise. The powders were mixed together with water and egg white to get the desired texture. When we magnify our artifact, close up, the small flecks of original color can be seen. shared the same hopes and fears and emotions that we share today. They were real people. So next time you visit a museum like this one, in Napoli perhaps, try and look at these people as part of your history.